So what is it about today that has allowed this kind of work to flourish? And there are a few things that I think have really helped to move this agenda. One is neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is probably the most important idea in neuroscience in the last decade. There are many different mechanisms of neuroplasticity, and it is being investigated on mechanisms that range from the molecular to the more systems level. This is a vibrant topic in all of neuroscience, and it gives neuroscientists an understanding of how meditation might work. And in science, unless you've got a mechanism, scientists are just not going to get their arms around it. But if you can give them a mechanism, a way to understand how this might work, a lot can happen. And neuroplasticity has provided this kind of framework and mechanism that really has allowed this work to go forward. And that's, that's really been difficult to overestimate. Another related idea, which actually Johnny mentioned in his opening remarks um, on Wednesday night, is epigenetics. Epigenetics refers to the fact that gene expression changes, that, that the operation and uh, regulation of genes are not fixed, but the uh, genes can be affected by the environment, they also can be affected by what we do, by how we think, by the emotional stances that we take. We know from research at the animal level that the way a mother treats her offspring can affect the gene expression in the brains of that offspring and affect those genes for the entire life of the offspring. So you can take an animal who is genetically, for genetic reasons, they are uptight and anxious. You can raise that animal with a mother who exhibits lots of nurturance and love. And at the rodent level, that's expressed by high levels of licking and grooming, probably at the human level, too. Um, <laughs> and if you have a mom who's showing high levels of licking and grooming, that literally is the stimulus which induces changes in a gene which codes for the glucocorticoid receptor, which is a major gene in the whole stress cascade pathway. And the alteration in that gene persists for the entire life of that organism. These are incredible findings. And they provide a framework for understanding how contemplative practice can affect our brains and our bodies in ways that go down to the level of gene expression. <clears throat> Another thing on the, on the contemporary horizon, which is important, is just this idea of translational research. This is a, an NIH buzzword. And what translational research means, the, the, the slogan is from, from bench to bedside. But what we really mean is research which is uh, taking account of basic research insights and applying them to real people in ways that may be benefiting their lives and helping to reduce suffering. And the, the enthusiasm for translational research is helping to provide an opportunity for activities like the activities of the CFM and MBSR to flourish. Any study that involves MBSR is translational research. And that is helpful in the current climate uh, because there's a lot of interest in that. Another idea which I've been talking a lot about to various audiences is this idea that I call neurally inspired behavioral interventions. The best way and the way that is the most specific to change your brain is not through any kind of medication or pharmacological treatment, but it is through mental and behavioral practices. 
And that is simply a fact. The reason is because when you take a medication, it affects systemic biological processes that, that are kind of blunt instruments that affect lots of different systems in the brain. If you want to have a specific effect in particular brain systems, the only way we now know to do it is through mental and behavioral training. So this is neurally inspired behavioral interventions. And I think of meditation practice um, as in part a neurally inspired behavioral intervention. And finally, this other phrase which I call putting the brain back into biomedicine. As we heard from Margaret's beautiful talk this morning, most of biomedicine is focused on the specific end organs that are uh, the targets of disease. The cardiovascular system, the lung, the kidney, the liver. The people who study these disorders are focused on the local biology of these disorders. But remember the, the embodied brain. The brain is contained within the body and there are bi-directional influences that are multiple and varied. Every organ system is innervated by the brain. We know that there are psychosocial factors which modulate the course of many different illnesses. That fact alone is a fact which means that the brain is talking to those organs and those organs are talking to the brain or else there would be no way for the psychosocial factors to get under the skin, if you will, and produce their effects. Once we begin to understand this, and once we actually work out some of the pathways, this allows, again, a more uh, fleshed out and mechanistic understanding for how meditation may affect the various biological systems which we're now finding it affects and how it may be beneficial for certain kinds of diseases like psoriasis for example where where there are data as John showed a number of years ago um, that MBSR has beneficial or variants of MBSR have beneficial effects <clears throat> 